This is William Patterson University Television. Hello. Welcome to Common Hour Comedy Hour. I will be your first comedian today. My name is Emily Wynn, and here we go. Um, so I'm a waitress, and waitressing is a trip. Every time I go to the diner, I'm like, all right, what idiocy is going to happen today? Actually, scratch that. The question shouldn't be what nonsense is going to happen today, but when the b is going to begin. Everyone's a comedian at the diner. I'll go over to a table and ask, can I get you anything? And the person sitting there will be like, a million dollars. What I want to say is, sir, if you think I had a million dollars, would I really be working here at the Happy Kitchen? And second of all, would I really share it with you? But instead what I say is, ah, ha, 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 ha. no, like more coffee. Um, but my favorite interaction that I've ever had while working happened the other week. I went up to a table and there was a mom and dad in the booth and there's a kid in the high chair and I walk over to ask them what they want to drink and the kid raises his arm and wails me on the arm. And the parents are like, no, we don't hit people. And I am not even phased. I have been here for four hours already. All I've had to eat today were two bites of scrambled eggs. Assault and battery doesn't even make me blink. So I'm like, no, 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 it's totally fine. You know, our sisters, blah, 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 blah. And so I go away and I come back to ask them a question and the kid raises his arm to smack me again. And the parents are like, oh, you want to give her a high five? And they're doing that redirect thing that parents do when their kid's being a little shit, but they can't admit that their kid's being a little shit because they're in public. So I raise my hand for a high five and he high fives me. And I'm like, all right, that'll work. So every time I have to go over to this table, I'm raising my hand as for a high five as a form of self-defense. And when I go to put their order in, I'm laughing so hard, I'm crying. And my manager is like, what the hell happened to you? And I'm like, there's a kid at D13 and he's hitting me and it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I prefer him to the man who called me a cheap Jew, so yeah. Yeah, I'm, I think my favorite part of that interaction is that I'm like 96% certain that this man has no idea that I'm actually Jewish and just said it because he could. Um, yeah, but it's very easy to get hate crime as a Jew. Um, you've probably seen a swastika before in history class. It's two squiggly lines intersecting each other. Anybody could draw that. I've seen seventh grade boys painstakingly carving it into desks. And I'm like, all right, seventh grade boys can't do if they can draw swastika, it is way too easy to hate crime me. I think you should have to take a six, a six month art class of minimum in order to be given that power. Um, there's also the Hail Hitler sign, which is literally just sticking your arm out in front of your chest. Don't do it just because I told you what it looks like, just picture it in your head. Um, and I was in marching band in high school and we were doing this bodywork thing where we'd like cross our chest and then we would end with sticking our arm out. And I remember looking around and being like, is the whole wind section hate criming me right now? <laughs> and then I'm doing it too. So I'm like, am I hate criming myself? Am I a bad Jew? All the while the drum line in the back is just laying down a beat. And I'm like, all right, so maybe I'm not being hate crime. Nobody's batting an eye. I mean, if I was being hate crimed, at least it was to the tune of White Rabbit. Never been hate crime to music before. Check that one off the bucket list. Um, but we're also very forgettable. A lot of the times I'll have holidays during things. Um, one of the ones was Rosh Hashanah happened a couple weeks ago and I had a rehearsal during the day during Rosh Hashanah and I went to my director and I was like, I'm gonna have to leave early cause it's like the Jewish new year. And he was like, yeah, no, 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 that's totally fine. Whatever, whatever. And I'm, so I'm like, okay, great. And I go home later to check when I'm called for. And in big letters, it says Emily Wynn, leaving early, Rosh Hashanah. And I'm like, all right, why don't we just take a permanent marker and write Jewish across my forehead? I feel like it'll be easier and less painful for all involved in the long run. Um, yeah, but a lot of times I have school during the holidays. One that falls most often during school is Hanukkah. And last year, I lived in a dorm during Hanukkah. Now, if you don't know what you can do in a dorm, you can't light candles. And that's like the biggest bit of Hanukkah is lighting candles. Um, so my aunt sent me an electric menorah through Amazon Prime two-day delivery. 
um, the sad, sad electric menorah. So instead of gracefully lighting candles every night, I would press a button on the side of the plastic and watch the crappy little LED lights light up and pretend I wasn't getting more depressed by the minute. Um, yeah, but the worst part about the menorah and the thing that told me that it really was not made by a Jew Made in China sticker on the side, probably aided in that discovery. But really what told me was that the menorah did not shut off by itself. You had to manually shut off the menorah. Now the number one rule of Hanukkah is you're not allowed to blow at the candles. You simply are not. And so shutting off the menorah man manually meant that you were basically blowing out the candles. So I had to ask my roommate to gremlin crawl into my room every night when I wasn't paying attention and just shut it off because it felt blasphemous to do it myself. But this year, Hanukkah and Christmas fall in the same week. Now I'm three quarters Jewish and one quarter Catholic, which means I'm Jew-ish. Um, and so that means that we have the epicenter of holiday cheer this year. Um, so in the morning, we'll wake up and we'll open our presents from Santa because Jesus was born. I don't really understand how Christmas works. And then at night, we'll eat Chinese food and light the menorah because we're more Jewish than we are Catholic. Um, and then this year, that means that there will be no need to use the wretched electric menorah. Thank you.